So before I talked about constructing confidence intervals about the mean when we knew the population standard deviation, and now I'm going to talk about how to do it when we don't know what the population standard deviation is. So first of all, point estimates. The value of any statistic that estimates the value of a parameter is called a point estimate. Like for example, here, the sample mean that estimates the population mean, the sample mean is our statistic, the sample mean is our point estimate, and the population mean is our parameter. We rarely know if our point estimate is correct because it's merely an estimation of the actual value, because usually the actual value would be impossible for us to find. So because of this discrepancy, we construct confidence intervals to help estimate what the actual value of the unknown population mean is. So a confidence interval is just a point estimate plus or minus a margin of error that we define based on three criteria. First of all, how confident we want to be with our assessment. Second of all, what the sample standard deviation is. And third of all, how large our sample is. So I have a question here where we could construct a confidence interval. On the verbal section of the SAT, a sample of 25 test takers has a mean of 520 with a standard deviation of 80. Construct a 95% confidence interval about the mean. So this is the equation constructing, for constructing confidence intervals when you don't know the population standard deviation. As you can see, it uses the sample standard deviation. And this is what it's going to look like. Basically, we want an interval of 95% of, of the values with the other 5% left over. So notice that we have 95% in the middle and the 5% left over split into two tails. So that 5% that we have left over, I'm going to call alpha. Alpha actually refers to the probability of making a type 1 error, but that's a little more advanced than I want to talk about today. Just know that that 0 0.05, that 5%, refers to the area that doesn't fall within our 95% interval. So in the equation, when you see t alpha divided by 2, it really just means t 0 0.05 divided by 2, t 0 0.025. It's asking us, okay, what is the t when the area in one of the tails is 0 0.025. So I'm going to get to that in a minute. Let's just go back to the example. We're constructing a 95% confidence interval. And notice that this is a two-tailed test because we have two tails. That's going to become important in a bit. Now, we can have one-tailed tests in the future, but when, it, when we're constructing confidence intervals, it's always going to be a two-tailed test. And because this is a t-test, because we don't know the population standard deviation, we're going to calculate degrees of freedom. In this case, degrees of freedom is n minus 1. We have a sample of 25, so 25 minus 1 is 24. We have 24 degrees of freedom. So I'm going to take you to this complicated t-table, which I showed everyone in the last lecture. And I'm going to highlight areas in red. It's kind of small, so you might want to make sure you're watching this in high definition so you can get it. So right now in red, I have the different degrees of freedom. That's one part of the table. Up here, in at the top, we have either if it's a one-tailed or a two-tailed test we're doing. We're doing confidence intervals, so we're definitely doing two-tailed tests. And also, we have the different values, the different proportions that exist in each of the tails. So here, we have our test with the 5% in the tail. Now, the total proportion that's in both tails is 0 0.05. If you want to look at the tails individual, individually, they each have 0 0.025 in them. So I'm going to go to this table and see in red I have 24 degrees of freedom highlighted. I'm going to show you how to find the value we need. So we have 24 degrees of freedom and I have 0 0.025 and 0 0.05 highlighted in red. So if it was a two-tailed test, the sum of both the tails is 0 0.05 and in each tail there's 0 0.025. So if you have either of those values, you can find what you need. So I just go across from 24 and I go down from 0 0.025 and 0 0.05 and I find out that the t associated with that point is 2.0639. So that's what t we're going to use in the equation. Now here is the equation that I just put up before. And now we're just going to plug things in. It's plus or minus, so we're going to do one with minus and one with plus. So I put all those things in there. We know that we have a standard deviation of 80. We know that our sample size is 25. We know that the sample mean is 520. And we know that the t that we just found using the degrees of freedom and the area in the tails is 2.0639. So the first number is our lower bound, and the second number is our upper bound. 
So we can say that we're 95% confident that the mean SAT score lies between 486.978 and 553.022. And that's how you construct a confidence interval about the mean when you do not know what the population standard deviation is.